All right. Good morning, Eric Melch again with Dealer Teamwork Interviews. This morning, I am joined by one of my favorite Dealer Teamwork employees, <laughs> Lainey Allman. Thank you for joining us. Great to see you, your smiling face. Uh, wonderful to have you on. Again, we've only done a few of these so far, so really, really excited to have you on uh, on one of our uh, earlier episodes. So tell everybody about who Lainey is and tell us more importantly, what has to happen back in the office when we were there and, and even now work from home, what has to happen for people to be, oh crap, get Lainey? <laughs> Um, well, hopefully, when we have a really great team, so hopefully there isn't a whole lot of "oh crap, get Laney" moments. <laughs> uh, so, um, but I am the senior client services director, or one of them, for Dealer Teamwork, and I'm in my 19th year with automotive in some format. Most of that was with uh, dealerships, actually, in the sales, you know, on the dealership side of things. Um, actually yesterday was my two year anniversary at dealer teamwork. That's awesome. Congratulations. So, thank we you. Are so lucky to have you. Well, thank you. I'm lucky to be here. Appreciate that. Um, and you know, what we do is really just the, the supporting of the dealers that are, are part of our, our, our team here. So, um, we work with them from getting everything implemented and, and started up to the ongoing relationship and just making sure that we're, you know, kicking butt for you guys uh, as often as possible. <laughs> you mentioned, uh, obviously, you got a great career. I mean, 20 years in the business is awesome. Um, share with us about some of the stuff you, you've actually done in the stores. I know you've been in quite a few positions, and in fact... Mm -hmm. You were you 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 were you came from your last dealership was Apple Valley, right? Yeah, my last group was Apple Autos, which is a local group here in um, in Minnesota, and uh, most recently with their General Motors store in Northfield, which is where I happen to live. Uh, but I also did work at their Apple Valley Ford store, which has traditionally been um, a number one volume uh, Ford store in our area. Uh, and ran the BDC for the whole company. It's a five-store company. So ran, started running the store or running the BDC for them and then ended up as a sales manager at the Apple Valley store and then sales manager at their Chevy store too. So, yeah. so were you in, did, didn't Apple Valley, uh, uh, the Apple group have a, a separate building for the BDC? Yeah, we did that in 2014. So between 2011 and 2014, the BDC was incorporated into one of the one of the stores, actually the Apple Valley Ford store. Um, but in 2014, then they got their own little building in Shakopee. Uh, so that's and then you know there's a little bit of movement around there, but they're they're in that building still. So I bet you, you know, crazy enough, we never talked about this. I bet you I met you there. Because Apple Valley and Alan Crutch, they were actually one of my very first consulting clients way before um, Dealer Teamwork. And then when we started Dealer Teamwork, Alan was one of the one of the very yeah. first people that put it on. And it was so funny because he, I called him and I said, Alan, we've got a great idea. We've got a new plan. Uh, we're going to put you on this. And, the, you know, this is what the software does. And he was like, his first response, typical Alan, he goes, great, send me the website send me some uh, testimonials and send me some data and some, you know, some data sheets. And I was like, uh -huh. no website, no customers, and <laughs> we don't have any data. I was like, literally, just trust me on this, Alan, okay? And he's like, yeah, sure, whatsoever. We put all four stores on, or four stores initially, yep. and, uh, and luckily it worked, and, you know, so they, they, they've been on since the beginning. So I bet you you were there. I came out to meet Alan and the team. Yeah, I was you, in the, you were right down the road from a uh, from, uh, – I, um, wasn't there a, an amusement park right down the road? Yeah, Valley Fair. Yeah, I, if, if you were there, then that's definitely where we, I'm, I'm sure uh, I met that's you. Crazy. That's hilarious. Small world. Totally. So, um, so let me ask you that. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, that's what I did at, you know, Apple Autos. But, I mean, I started the week after 9-11, I started selling cars uh, with Walzer, which is another local company. So I'll never forget that either. Just starting to sell cart literally the Monday after nine 11. So. Yeah. So tell everybody about what, you know, what's happening now. Obviously we're, you know, everybody's on shutdown. We got dealers at different state uh, in different states uh, of operations, you know, sales closed completely appointments only, you know, distance sales, um, you know, obviously services open in some cases. 
uh, most cases across the board. What are you seeing differently, obviously, within the operations that is that is a welcome change from a support standpoint? And, and what are some of the surprising things that you've experienced yourself? Sure. Um, well, I would say, you know, when, when everything started, I think everybody took a similar approach, which was to, um, you know, pull back on their media. So, uh, you know, as the states went through their different requirements, their shutdowns or, you know, shelter in place or whatever it was, you know, most states relatively quickly started trying to, the dealers trying to do some sort of remote test drive, um, you know, remote just buying a car, you know, as much off site as possible, as well as pickup and delivery for service, a couple of states where they had to shut down. Um, so we went through this period that was probably about, you know, I'd say two weeks or so where we were seeing a lot of pullback on, on media, but then um, a couple of dealers in some really challenging environments actually said, no, I don't want to do that. I want to stay in the market because I know the person down the street has pulled back and I'm not going to do that and see if I can capture some, some extra, um, uh, you know, search. And, and for a number of dealers that actually was really successful. So now we're kind of in this period where uh, people are coming back on and they are starting to spend money again and they're actually seeing some really great results. So I, I think, you know, we're learning this along with our dealers, right? Nobody really knew what was going to happen. So from a support standpoint, I think that we were, you know, first of all, just in general, our people are really nice people and they care, genuinely care. So um, we have good relationships with our dealers. So a lot of this initially was just, let's work through it. And then when we're able to give some advice and just make some different recommendations and um, you know, seeing people coming kind of back out of it and really adopting these new norms with pickup and delivery, remote test drives, pay for work, all the things that, you know, I think from us in auto industry, like, you know, we've been talking about trying to do this for a long time. And there's been right. a number of different attempts, I think, for people to get kind of in the groove of this remote stuff. Um, and now, now the consumer is like, yeah, let's do this. We, we need to do this as well because we have to have a car or we have to get our car fixed and we still want to be safe. So how are you going to help? And um, that's really where our messaging has, has come into play. So. So what do you think uh, is different now in terms of, you know, you do such a wonderful job when we're in the office, obviously driving the team and leading the team. Um, you know, what are you seeing differently and what type of advice would you give to other people in your type of, in your position where you are leading a team, you know, managing a work from home, uh, type of workforce is much different. You know, so wh what have you experienced and what type of advice would you give to others that are in that type of role? Sure. So first of all, what we're doing right now, which is this face-to-face -face communication, even over, you know, whatever tool we're using, Ring Central or Slack, um, my number one piece of advice is to do this as much as possible. Look people at, in their faces um, and have conversations. I think the biggest challenge has been communication. Again, we have a big team and there's a lot of moving parts. Like when, with our dealers accounts, there isn't just one person working on it. There's multiple people. So uh, communicating across the board has been a little extra challenge and it takes a little more time because again, you have to get more people involved where I could just walk over to one person and walk or get everybody in a room really quickly. Um, those things are, are a lot more challenging and, and a little bit more time consuming. You know, and on top of that, you know, this is different for everybody. So we, we all are, you know, I think doing a really good job of staying positive, but it's still weird, you know, and, it, and it's a little unsettling. And so if we're feeling a little, a little off and we're just messaging each other, that sometimes just doesn't work right. So, you know, as a leader, I would say my, my biggest piece of advice to other leaders out there is to, to be gentle also, to really be, um, you know, just understanding. And I, I try to talk to just my managers as well as anybody else that, you know, has a question. And I try to, you know, yes, let's talk about what your issue is that I can help you with, but then let's talk about something different. Like show, you know, walk me around your house and show me your house, show me your dog, show me your cats, you know? Um, no, I don't care that you don't have makeup on. I want to see your face. You know? So, uh, and then, you know, myself included and a number of people are also balancing 
uh, working remote with um, children that are distance learning. Mm -hmm. And so I try to encourage people, you know, you have to have your priorities and then you have to give yourself a little grace. You know, I, I myself, I warned my kids before we got on this call, I went downstairs and I'm like, <laughs> quiet. Um, <laughs> but they're trying to, you know, figure out how to spell something or math or whatever. So it's, you know, we just, we just have to stay stay in it together, I guess. <laughs> well, that's great advice. And you, you've honestly, you've been doing a great job with it. Um, you know, I know everybody's talking about how much you know, the communication has increased. And I know I, I've seen it personally. You know, we have nothing else to do. Uh, so, you know, other than, you know, for, you know, for people like yourself that, you know, uh, you know do have to balance that, uh, you know, the, the home life with the children, um, you know, Again, I'm an empty nester now, and it's you know, it's it's different. You know, other I don't get to go out. You know, I can't go to dinner, obviously, like everybody else. But yeah, I honestly have nothing else to do. So obviously, my productivity level has gone up, and I'm trying sure. to balance that. I could honestly sit here in my office for you know 24 seven, but obviously I can't. You know, I, I can't burn myself out. Right. But, um, yeah, it, it is it, it is tough, and I. I, we've seen some really nice things. Obviously you saw like Kayla's video that she did mm -hmm. yeah, just keeping themselves busy, you know, making masks and other personal projects. You have to do that. Um, tell me this. So what are some of the changes? And I've asked a lot of people this, this week as well, Lanny, what other changes do you think are going to happen in the industry that we're, we'll be happy to see happen, you know, almost like bad habits going away type of thing. What are, what are you looking forward to seeing? Um, I'm looking forward to the transparency of the automotive process. Uh, when you are doing, when you're handling sight unseen trades and sight unseen financing and sight unseen deliveries and all that, I think the transparency of the automotive industry is going to increase overall. And I think that's really great. Um, from our standpoint here, I think dealers really are going to understand the importance of, of digital marketing. Um, cause that's, that's what we got. Right. So, uh, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how we grow that and just how dealers, you know, we, we've taken the time during this also to, to educate a lot of people on, on what we do and why it's important. And I think now more than ever, we're getting those dots connected. So uh, nice. both in the industry and with us, I think there's going to be some good change. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing this too. Um, you know, James has been saying, it for a while now, ever since the beginning, you know, he didn't, it, early on, we were saying the same thing with, we know change is going to happen. And then uh -huh. the change started to happen. And then we started seeing the actions come from it. And then James's point was, I think he told a story about where one of the stores came to pick his wife's car up uh -huh. and, work and brought it back. You know, and his, his response was, she's never going to want to go to the store again. So right. these right. types of changes are happening. Obviously that's, this can't just be a one and done. Because once you do that and you offer that creature comfort like that, you know, it's like, well, you got to do that more often. So I'm looking forward to the processes you know, changing as well. Um, you know, you, you mentioned as well before about the, you know, the lifestyle changes too with, mm -hmm. you know, at home. I remember seeing a picture, I think you shared on Facebook, you were doing some game, you know, with, you know, you're throwing the ball at your kid and <laughs> catching it in the basket. Um, yeah. What else are you doing too with um, you know with the kids? How old are your kids again? Uh, fourteen and ten. So the fourteen-year-old daughter, eighth grade, she's solid. Home or her distance learning, she's you know mm -hmm. don't have to worry about her. Um, the ten-year-old, it's just a struggle. Turns out he's really into it for social aspects, right? So not having that is a little bit more challenging. So um, you know, a lot of walks. I also have a dog who now kind of is like, really, we're gonna go for another walk. <laughs> kind of tired. Can you leave me alone? Um, <laughs> but so the kids and I, we do a lot of walks. Um, actually, this is fun. Just my own little thing that I kind of nerd out on, but my daughter and I got um, one of those mi murder mystery boxes. It's called Hunt a Killer. I've seen and, those. And we got our first box early in the week. So we did it on Monday and now, you know, it's supposed to be monthly. But as soon as we finish that, I'm like, send the next one because we want to do it. So it's super fun. You get this whole big kit of things and it, it makes you feel like you're really, you know, you're really uh, 
digging into something and figuring things out. So, so that's been really fun because it's a completely, it's a completely different thing, right? We're not, it's not work because to your point, you're absolutely right. You could sit in front of your computer and work all the time because why yeah. not, right? I can only sweep my floor so many times. <laughs> um, but number two, and so if you're not working, I'm not cooking, I'm not cleaning, I'm not trying to make the kids do schoolwork. It's something completely different and it's, it's really cool. So. It's yeah. I saw one of those and I, I put it into a list on Amazon. I'm going to now on your recommendation, I'm going to get it. My wife loves those things. And I, oh. I read a funny article too. It said that like, like murder mystery shows and the murder podcasts and uh, uh, law and order stuff, those type of shows, they're predominantly watched and followed by women. That's the, that's the major demographic. I thought that was interesting. So that I, is interesting. I'm going to have to get <laughs> one of those. Um, yeah. So hey, here's a quick question. Oh, sorry. My phone's ringing. Um, you hear it, and it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a recording on my end without it hearing my dogs bark in the back. <laughs> that's, what I have to, that's what I have to warn for. Um, yeah. All right, so car, kitchen, bathroom. What do you clean first? Kitchen. All right. <laughs> car for me, the car. <laughs> I have to do that. Uh, that's maybe this weekend, that's a car. The car and garage. I got to get the leaves out of my garage. Yeah, that's the one thing that I keep repeating back to is I, I've cleaned my garage out like five times now. I don't think I've cleaned it out five times in the last year. So <laughs> now my garage is, is absolutely spotless. Um, what, what's some of the feedback that you're getting as well from dealers in terms of um, new problems that you, you're, you've seen as well? Um, you know, we, we keep hearing new things coming up, but what do you think, again, some of those opportunities for solutions um, and even maybe, you know, what have you seen the MPOP do? You know, what have you seen our platform do that you are actually surprised with? Like some, uh, some new found type of solutions and, and value. Um, I, I guess, you know, it's maybe not, it's maybe more apparent to the dealers on what the MPOP is able to do in these situations than it ever was before. And I would say, uh, case in point is uh, the turnaround time, right? So we were able to, uh, FCA and General Motors and Ford came out with their 0% for 84 months and we had all of their ads updated and new banners on pages like by the end of that first day for the most part, you know? Um, so that, that turnaround or, you know, what you showed me right before this call, you know, we have a... Um, Ford comes out with extra money for their, for their medical professionals and boom, we've got a page and by the end of the day or the, you know, well, yeah, it's Friday. So by the end of the day, I mean, we could have that on all of our Ford stores. So yeah. that, that, that turnaround time to me is where so valuable in a situation like this. So. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, and just like we said before, the, those changes that are coming to the dealers, you know, obviously the dealers are seeing our turnaround time as well. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's something that we have to be careful as well in terms of, Hey, we're, you know, we're delivering so quickly. We're mm -hmm. offering such, you know, attentive service. We can never step back from that as well. And right. you know, I've been saying to Sean you know, over and over, this is our opportunity too to shine in terms of what else can we automate? What else can we create better efficiencies with. So I'm excited about that because if we can seize this opportunity to be able to raise the level of, of uh, you know, of quality, you know, everybody's going to win from that. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited on that. Yeah. So yeah. Let, 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 let finish this off and you, know, you can leave us with one final thought just in terms of, um, you know, where you think, uh, you know, where you think your head is at in terms of, you know, you know, all of this going on. Um, what do you think is, what do you think the biggest personal takeaway for yourself is going to be after we try to, you know, we're, we're starting to see the peak hopefully and we're starting to see things trend better, but wh where's Laney's head at personally? Um, I think my biggest takeaway is I, I always considered myself like I was totally cool if I was alone and staying home and no, no, I don't need to go around or, or see people. And um, that is not true. So I think my biggest takeaway is really the appreciation of the people in my life and being around people, um, you know, 
hugging somebody i mean boy i'm not much of a hugger but all i can think of is man i can't wait to see you and give you a big hug and um you know just that that's my biggest personal takeaway i think is just we need people and you know i i tell the managers or whoever ever i'm talking to it's like you might be alone where you're at but people care about you and you know we are going through this together but we also have to remember to say that to people and I think that's been a huge message when we talk to each other is to say, hey, you know, hey, Eric, I appreciate you. I appreciate the work you're doing. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Um, and I, you know, if you're having a bad day, that's a, another time to reach out, right, and talk to somebody because um, I think just how we rely on each other, that's a, a big takeaway. No, that's a be beautiful words. Well spoken. I, I can't, I can't agree with you more on that. It's, uh, you know, and, and I got to say, I'm a little jealous on your part that you are with your kids. And I know it's, it's, everybody has to yeah. get to that point where yes, kids can, can grade on you for a little bit, but you, you know, in this situation, you know, you're extremely fortunate to be with them. You know, like I said before, my kids are not here with me and I do miss them and yeah. I'm not able to see them like, uh, you know, like I, I wish I could, but you're yeah. absolutely right. I, I do miss my friends. I miss all of you guys as well. And, you know, you guys, you guys are all used to being in the office and, you know, ever since the, since, since day one, obviously I've been remote as well. And that's why I've always loved the video, uh, the video communication, but more than ever being able to see you guys and, you know, still work with you guys. And, you know, we're very fortunate. Um, uh, and I do appreciate everything that you've done. I've had so much fun working with you and, uh, I know that the, all the dealers that you guys support, they, they, you know, they rave about you and the team. So thank cool. you very much for joining us today. Awesome thank to you. see you. Have a great rest of the afternoon and enjoy your weekend. All right. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Lainey.